Hello again. I actually said that I wasn't going to do this video until I'd got the new secondary mirror for my Quattro telescope, but impatience got the better of me, and also it's it's such a really exciting discovery this one uh, that I just wanted to you know get it there as soon as possible. Really, you know, I just just impatient, I suppose. Um, and it's advanced collimation of Newtonian telescopes. Now, some of the ground uh, we've already covered in previous videos, and I will just sort of skirt over that and make reference to it, just some of the, the smaller points, if you like. Um, so, first of all, what I want to do is just introduce you to the spider again uh, from a Newtonian. And the reason why I want to introduce you to this again is when we actually do this advanced collimation um, thing, I'm going to use some terminology that I need to really explain. Now, also within this video, I'm going to make some pretty controversial statements, um, and I'm very, very open to it, it, it being discussed on my website at Astronomy Shed uh, once you've been through everything. So, onto this the spider. Uh, now, everybody that's got a new tone in is familiar with it. You've got the three adjustment screws uh, on the outside with the, the central screw in the middle and it actually moves over quite a number of axes now what i want to refer to these axes as is this one i will refer to in the future as rotation now if we adjust those outside grub screws and we and we make the mirror go this way then i will refer to that as tilt if i adjust those screws and make the mirror go off sideways sort of in that plane I'll refer to that as slew. Now, also because we've got a central screw in that in that boss, if you like, in the secondary, that means that we move the secondary in and out away from the spider, which is how we sort of center it under the focuser. So we'll we'll be moving it sort of either towards the primary or away from the primary. So that's the spider movements covered. Now also I'm going to be using a few tools within this. Uh, some you will have, some you won't, but it doesn't detract from sort of the, the interest really in, in what I'm going to show you. The first thing that we need is really simple, it's just a, a Barlow. This is a, a standard Skywatcher two times Barlow lens. We're going to need a single point laser collimator now we refer to this as a single point purely and simply because when you turn it on you do get a single point of laser light. Now I actually prefer this version of the collimator. I know that there's a lot of them about and I prefer this one for a couple of reasons. Number one, it's it's collimatable. It actually has uh, three screw holes in the end of it so you can actually collimate the laser to the casing making sure that everything's all nice and straight and square but also it has this 45 degree target area in it which makes things a lot easier for seeing because you can put the collimator into a telescope and you can be at sort of the primary end of the telescope and see still be able to see what's going on in that target area i know some have got a target area and it, it's flat so it, it 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 sort of you know takes away from the purpose really because there's nothing worse than keep going turning a little screw and walking back over and then going back and you know this just fixes all that now this is actually the antares um, laser collimator. There are a couple around that actually look very similar to this and they're not. So it's the Antares laser collimator and just to give you a good look at it in case you, you know, you're in the market for one, that's exactly what it looks like. The next thing that we're going to be using is one of these which is a Cheshire collimator. Now you don't actually need to use one of these uh, with this method. I'm basically using this to verify the results of this this um, this new collimation method, if you like. Um, now the last thing that we need, uh, you probably won't have, uh, and you would have to make one if you do want to use this method. And um, to be honest, this it's it's so good this method, uh, and I'm really really excited about it that you do want to do this. Uh, this is a billet parts um, adapter for a Microsoft Life Cam Cinema. Now, I've done the, the telescope adaptation to this camera, but I haven't removed the internal lens. The internal lens is still in there. There you go, you can see it now. And the reason being that now it just works as a normal webcam, if you like, but that fits into a telescope focuser, and I can see exactly what's going on inside the telescope. Now, 
uh, some credit as well. This this whole idea um, for this collimation method actually comes from a, a long discussion that I had with a friend of mine called Mick on uh, on an internet forum uh, quite a long time ago, where we were uh, talking about fitting camcorders into telescopes to check out the alignment of mirrors and everything. And this is just sort of an advancement on from that. So the first thing I'm going to do now is I'm going to go to the telescope and just fit this squarely back into the telescope and, and then we'll sort of move over and, and we'll carry on from there. Right, as you can see, we've now got the spider back into the scope itself. The camera's now looking roughly down the scope uh, at a slight angle just so that we can fit everything in. You can see that we've got the secondary mirror adjustments here uh, with the spider. And there in the distance, you can see the centre spot on the primary mirror. Now, on this one, it isn't a ring. It's actually a little radiation symbol, uh, which I've gone into before. It's a, it's a, a spot called a, a hot spot, in actual fact. Now, everybody that's got a laser collimator uh, will follow the directions and say, you know, that you, you turn your laser collimator on and you adjust your secondary until you get the red spot onto the centre of your primary and that's sort of your, your secondary mirror set up. Well, this is my controversial statement. Single point lasers lie and I can prove it and they are absolutely useless for setting up a secondary mirror. And I'm going to demonstrate why. Firstly, we turn on the laser. Now you can see that that laser point is roughly in the centre of the, the hot spot, if you like, in the, in the primary mirror, which is what the instructions tell you. Okay, let's just introduce a slight rotational error, like so. We're no longer pointing at the spot in the primary mirror. Now that rotational error obviously is a rotational error because I've just introduced it. But I can actually correct that rotational error by adjusting the various bolts on the secondary like so and you can see that's coming in and you can see that obviously if I just spent a little more time with it I'd get it to go back into the centre now obviously I've greatly exaggerated that movement but you can see that what I've actually done is I've introduced a rotational error and I've corrected it by introducing a slew error and a tilt error so in actual fact now we've now got two errors in that secondary mirror now like i said we i've greatly exaggerated that but i know that when you look down a side tube and you center sort of your secondary mirror into a, a, as tight a circle as you can but your eyes just aren't that good and it isn't going to be absolutely spot on and that's why a laser collimator is no good really for collimating a secondary mirror Right, before I actually show you this advanced collimation method, we're just going to do a little bit of preparation uh, and we'll, we'll sort of show you why we've done this uh, as we move along. What we're going to do is just slacken off very slightly the centre bolt in the, the secondary boss. And the next thing that we're going to do is to unscrew the three adjustment grub screws so that we know that they're completely retracted from the opposite side, they're not putting any influence on the secondary. Like so. Now the next thing that we're going to do is to tighten the middle bolt again. And we're going to tighten that all the way, just roughly support your, your, prime, uh, your secondary mirror. Uh, you know, just sort of roughly square under your focuser because it's not grossly important at this particular stage. Now then, once we've done that, these these three bolts are no longer having any influence on the secondary mirror. The secondary mirror now is simply held to this by the central bolt, which means that we know everything is as square as it, it's basically going to get. Next, what we do is get the three grub screws again and just finger tighten them until you feel them touching. You know, they hit the stop of your actual secondary mirror.
like so. So you're not aiming to tighten these, you just feel for them actually hitting just between finger and thumb like so. And the reason why we do that is because now we can move the, the secondary mirror up and down the tube towards the, the primary and away from the primary by almost exact amount because what we can do is we can slacken the middle bolt like so and then if we move through each of these grub screws and turn one full revolution of each screw like so we know that we've moved those three screws about the, the exact same amount down the tube so that if we now tighten up again we know that we still should be in theory square to the actual spider because these have moved in the, the same amount and we're going to be using that to actually centralize the secondary mirror underneath the focuser which is what we're going to do next Right, because at the moment we're only interested in adjusting the secondary mirror, we need to do as much as we can to keep the primary sort of out of out of things. And the best way that I find to do that is if you take something like this envelope and a piece of coloured card. Now what we do is simply place the envelope into the tube, being careful not to put any marks on your secondary mirror while you do it, and just manipulate that envelope like so and it's now in effect it's hiding your primary mirror from your secondary mirror the next thing we're going to do to add some contrast is simply to place a piece of coloured card in there and we lay this exactly opposite the focuser in the tube like so you know, so like the focus is here, the red card here. That way now we've created some contrast and we've also hidden the, the primary mirror from the secondary and you'll see why in just a moment. Right, the first thing we need to do once we've got our webcam plugged in is to launch the SharpCap software and I will put a link up on the screen for where to find SharpCap. Now once you've got SharpCap up and running with your camera preview and the preview screen in SharpCap we need to launch the reticule. Now the reticule puts in effect a reticule over the top of the preview screen. Now it places the reticule centrally over the preview and this, this reticule you can actually move it by clicking on it with your mouse and, and adjusting it but at start up SharpCap places the, the reticule in the centre if you find that you've sort of messed about with it and knocked it off centre by any chance um, or even rotated it because it will rotate by using the right mouse button um, just close sharp cap and restart it and press the reticule and the reticule will go back to the centre again now we also need another piece of software called Mirda Collimation which is a free download and you can google for it and I will put the name on the bottom of the screen once you've downloaded Mirda Collimation launch media collimation it's just an exe file you don't actually have to install it and it places an overlay over any program with circles on it now the intent is to overlay this overlay over the reticule on sharp cap and make it exactly central now what you have to do it will take quite a bit of fiddling about but once you've moved into exactly the right position if you look at exactly the centre of where those targets are it will make a tiny circle with a cross going right through the middle of it like so and now you know that both reticules the overlays are centrally aligned perfectly so next what we need to do once we've done this is to place the the live cam into the telescope Right, we've now got the camera plugged into the telescope and as you can see, we're now presenting the circle of the secondary mirror which is the reflection of the envelope, the brown envelope and on the outside we've got the reflection of the red card 
uh, that's on the opposite side of the focuser that we placed in there. Now after just maybe setting the brightness and, and what have you on the camera to get it nice and comfortable, you can also rotate the camera to a, a direction that is comfortable for you. For, for me, I prefer to just rotate it so that the, the shadow, which you see on the right hand side, is actually where the aperture of the scope is. So to the left is towards the primary mirror, to the right is away from the primary mirror. Then we can change the sizes of the circles in mirror collimation and we can adjust it to a size that's similar to our secondary mirror, it just makes things a little bit easier. And we can see from that image that the mirror actually needs to come towards the aperture of the scope so we need to tighten that center bolt a little bit. I'm just going to do a little couple of twists in there and you can see that rotation again it stops that secondary mirror from being a circle. Um, remember we need to present our secondary mirror as a circle uh, not an ellipse and obviously rotating makes it elliptical so we make it into as, as good a circle as we can and also we need to like I said adjust until we get a circle that is presented in the center of the media collimation circle because then we know that we're presenting a circle as our secondary but it is also central under the focuser because the media collimation is centered on the point of view through your focuser once we've done that We should now be presented with this, which is giving us now that circle, which is a, a, a true and correct circle uh, presented underneath that center circle of mere decollimation, like so. Now, don't forget that when we're adjusting, we turn exactly the same number of revolutions, either slackening or tightening of the three grub screws, and then take up the difference with that central screw because we want to keep that mirror moving either in or out parallel we don't want to start putting sort of slew errors in there and that's what we've got here now i would suggest if you once you've got to this stage if the mirror won't centralize it may be high or it may be low then you need to start looking at your focuser and your focuser may not quite be be centrally aligned uh, because if we just move in and out that mirror should as i say present as a circle within that circle of mere decollimation so what do we do next Right, once we've got that, sen that secondary mirror centred in the media collimation with the camera, the next thing that we need to do is to remove our red card and our envelope. And now that will start to introduce all the reflections back in again and we're going to go back over to the, the laptop view, the camera view now and give you a little surprise. Right, what we do now is turn the zoom up fully in sharp cap so that we've zoomed in now it isn't particularly showing up very very well on um on the camera here uh, in the recording but you can actually see my center spot on the primary now is just a little over to the left and what we can do is then start to adjust the tilt on the mirror to try and just bring it in and it might be a very 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 slight rotation as well but you can see as i'm adjusting the mirror now we're starting to bring that center spot into the middle and there it is presented exactly in the center um, as i said you can't see it very well in the in this reproduction and it does depend on how well you see it as to where you've got your telescope aperture pointing you just need to sort of set it up so you've got the right amount of light shining into your telescope and you know that center spot will actually light up for you almost so what we do is we center that that center spot of the primary in the middle of the media collimation cross as i've got there now the next thing we need to do is look at the primary right now that we've done the first centering of the secondary um on the computer screen we next have to come to the primary and we we need to center that primary mirror and for that we're going to use a bar load laser method which is you put a laser into a barlow and I'm just going to try and zoom into that for you and see if you can see it there we go 
and you should be able to see a reflection of my centre spot there which isn't quite centred at the moment so we're just going to make a few adjustments like so and now that is, is centered um, using the bar load laser method now what we need to do once we've, we've, we've adjusted the primary is again go back to the secondary on the computer screen with the, with the camera and center again because what we're doing is there's a very tight relationship between the primary and the secondary um, all the reflections and if we move one it also will move out that relationship with the, with the other so we now go backwards and forwards a couple of times until the both are exactly in as we move from one side to the other eventually by doing this it might take two it might take three it might take four sort of transfers from primary to secondary but eventually they will both be exactly in you'll adjust say the secondary you'll come back to the primary and find it's exactly in so next we're going back over to the secondary Right, I've now quite significantly slowed this next section down so that I can fit the amount of narration in that I need to fit in. As you can see, I've moved the scope to a, a slightly brighter uh, direction and you can now see that centre spot very, very clearly there. It's the yellow radiation symbol in the middle. Now, you will find that each trip to primary and then to secondary, if it takes you know more than, more than once, you will find that the, the amount that the that it's actually out is less. So for instance, say when we first started on the secondary mirror, let's just say for argument's sake, it was an inch out from the center. Uh, and you center it then go to the primary and center the primary when you go back to the secondary it may only be out by a quarter of an inch that distance that, that, that it's out will actually reduce each sort of iteration that you do of the process so as you can see there now that is absolutely well almost smack in the middle it's about as, as near to the middle as it'll possibly go um, you know otherwise you just turn into levels of precision where you'd need to be a surgeon Right, well basically that's it. Um, I've had the Cheshire in and compared the, the camera method to the Cheshire and it's just absolutely spot on. Um, you will maybe get some little discrepancy sometimes, purely and simply because even with a Cheshire, if you take a Cheshire out and then put it back in again and look again, you'll just see a tiny discrepancy anyway unless you've got sort of a, you know, a, a mega bucks uh, focusing system and an eyepiece retention system it's just the the physics of the whole thing it's not you know 100 percent precise so it's in exactly the same position every time that you put it in there um so you know there, there is some tiny little bit of tolerance in there but this this method just works 100 percent and i took the time with doing it and looking through the cheshire i've seen probably the best Cheshire um, collimation that I've ever seen. It's just it's textbook. Um, you know, it's it's exactly as the pictures show. It should be the crosshairs aligned with the the veins in the spider. Uh, everything. It's just absolutely spot on. So it's just a little bit of food for thought there, and something for you to maybe experiment with and everything, and just you know an all different thing. And like I said, uh, it might sort of open a few eyes that laser collimators actually do lie. And that's it for this one, so I'm you know, quite short, but I think it was, it was quite an adventurous one, this one. And once again, thanks for watching.